there. Uh, you know, we get back to the bridge. Um, Din Djarin shows up. Everybody else is already there. Um, and he's walking in with the Darksaber ignited. Gideon's in cuffs. Grogu's in his hands. Triumphant hero moment. Um, and then Bo-Katan is like, WTF, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do you have that in your hands? And What happened? Yeah. Um, we, we get the little bit of exposition drop about how uh, the Darksaber needs to be won. Um, mm-hmm. And that becomes a point of contention now because, you know, some people are saying, well, on Star Wars Rebels, uh, Sabine gave the Darksaber to Bo-Katan and she just willingly took it and held it over her head and yeah, Mandalore. So yep. what do we think is going on with that? Um... I think it creates conflict and allows the story to progress, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I mean, at its, at its basic level, I, I, that's, I was going to exactly I was going to say it. like, I was going to say, Sean, what do you think first? Cause I'll, I'll add my thoughts at the end. Oh so, yeah. The, the, the seven out of 10, you know, star Wars diehard, right. I mean, things that <laughs> optimize to move things forward uh, and allows conflict to occur that moves into the next season. But um having watched that episode, you know, um, it, it was just a different set of circumstances uh, that, that, that uh, led for uh, Bo to go ahead and receive that. So um, I, I think a case could be made for both. And again, uh, I, I, I default to my previous statement, if it's written well and it's moving along well, like you kind of overlook those kind of canon follies. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think there's an argument to be made for both, not to just sit on the fence here or anything, but I, I I don't think that's out of bounds. Well, I saw one of one of my friends and that Corey, you know, too, Arturo used to work with us at Apple. Mm-hmm. He posted um, today something about that where he said it's not a contradiction in his opinion. It's her learning from her past mistakes. And, you know, she she made that decision in the past to go ahead and just accept the blade even though she probably knew she shouldn't have and we see what's happened she lost it she lost the throne she kind of lost everything and um she is probably just really hesitant to make the same same mistake twice um and that that kind of makes sense to me and to sean's point too it sets up a whole new kind of storyline that we can go with in the future which is that as of right now din Djarin is has the claim to the Mandalorian the throne. to Mandalore. You know, that's that's him. And that it's, could be season three because in season three, he doesn't probably have Grogu. Right. Um, there's some of his other companions that won't be with him anymore. And we'll talk about that. Um, so, you know, their, their kind of home base was wrecked. Everybody is scattered. He doesn't really know where everybody else is. So why the hell not? Yeah. You know? It felt very Game of Thronesian. It really did. Like yeah. early Game of Thrones, not not the end. But <laughs> so like good Game of Thrones. Season three, four Game of Thrones. Yeah. Right, right. First half, first half Game of Thrones. Yeah. No, I actually, I think you, um, <clears throat> Kevin and Sean, make good uh, valid points. And uh, if I just add on to that, maybe it does create a bit of question because of what does happen in Star Wars Rebels. And it's like, here, this is, this is yours. You're you know, your, your sister was, you know, ruled Mandalore. So it should go to you, but yeah, RIP. Um, and uh, how ironic she and Obi-Wan are both dead. Um, yeah. Unfortunate, but uh, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting because I think where this might go into season three, they, they, they tag up or they, you know, they, they team up rather. And I wonder if, uh, Din Jaren has to keep an eye, you know, looking backwards, you know, or like was it kind of have eyes in the back of his heads a bit to to make sure that she doesn't try and attack it, and, you know, attack him to steal it. And I kind of wonder what her mindset is. Is you know how important is it to her? Or is it like you know, is she like? That's my precious. You know, like this. <laughs> this must have it back. Trixie you know, Jaren. Stupid Mandalorian. <laughs> you stole it from us. Yeah, sort, sort of thing. Um, but at the same you are time, way too good at that. That's fucking terrifying. Yeah, it's freaky. It's That's like, freaky. is Andy Circus here? Is Snoke himself in the building, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? Jesus yeah. Christ. Ah, uh, Snoke R.I.P. Um, 
<laughs> you know, a lot of dead motherfuckers in Star Wars, huh? Oh God, yeah, <laughs> a, lot, a lot, a lot of good things that could have been and just weren't. Um, destroyed by Ryan Johnson. Anyway, oh, stop it. Um, <laughs> it's not what we're here for tonight. I know. I said we're anyway. I, I, I digress. It. I know. I know. Son of a mud scuffer. <laughs> Dank Farrick. All right, uh, bringing us back on track. I, I bring yourself I, I, back I, online. Well, here's the thing. I think about it for Din Jaren. Uh, he doesn't want it. I don't want it. He's like Jon Snow. He's Jon Snow, man. <laughs> you know, and he's like, I got a best car spear that combats this. So even if she does try to take it away from him, he's going to be like, well, now at that point, it's who's the better I got two combat guns, fighter? One for each of you. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he's as strong to wield a spear and the dark saber, but. Um, yeah, they could go a couple ways with this, and I think it really depends on how many how many seasons they end up going with the Din Djarin Mandalorian. Right. So, uh, or, I, mean, I mean, what was one of the primary tests for uh, Bo Katan going after that? Also, trying to get to the point of buying Ezra and and partnering up with Ahsoka, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is uh, again, we could we could speculate and theorize because of what That's where we're here right <laughs> well yeah well, and again with the feloni verse or rather the favro feloni verse they could, all these stories could intertwine with one another to oh they're going to yeah oh yeah for sure oh. so oh. it's gonna be so good you yeah. know he, what I, what i think i would do if i were in den's position and i was just like okay cool i've got this shit that i can't give away uh <laughs> and i don't want it uh so I would probably just go to Mandalore and take the throne and then set up some type of tournament and just be like, all right, those of you who want it, come get it, you know, and whoever's the last man standing, that's the, that's the one at that point, you know, I don't see another way to do it. If you just, if you can't give it to somebody. Yeah. That's kind of like Douglas Adams um, and all the hitchhiker books. He said, uh, the only person who could be president of the galaxy was uh, somebody that didn't want to be president of the galaxy. <laughs> yeah. If you wanted it, you weren't allowed to do it. So there was only that one person. <laughs> the answer is 42. <laughs> <laughs> I love though, Nick, the, the comparison to Jon Snow. Um, Cause he's, Din has become the reluctant hero who really didn't want to be there at the beginning yeah. of season one. He's a bounty hunter who's showing up, He's doing his jobs. He's getting paid. He's going home, and that's it. And I all of a sudden, keep working. He gets thrusted into a universe that has Ahsoka Tano and Boba Fett and Moff Gideon and all these people, and maybe a few more that we'll get to in a few minutes here that might be of some importance to the Star Wars galaxy. Like it's just it's completely crazy that he. he I don't want this. Kind of feels yeah. like what he should be saying over and over and over in his head. Like he oh, didn't yeah, sign so. up. He didn't sign up for this, and it just so happens that he falls into this this rabbit hole of vast importance within the Star Wars universe that he's just unaware of. Right? Like yeah. he's like, wait, the Jedi are a bunch of ancient sorcerers <laughs> that fought us way back when, like centuries ago. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Right, yeah. exactly. He, he doesn't know anything. But, but he's, he in a, he's in a very interesting position now because his, and, and we just touched on it a second ago, but his mission is over. Yeah. He did what he set out to do. He can't go back to life as it was. He's kind of like a soldier that's come home when the war is over mm -hmm. or, or even a prisoner that's let, let go. Like yeah. they, they don't, they don't know what to do anymore. They have, you know, they have no, no direction, no purpose. And, and it's a problem because they, they don't know who they are outside of that one role. Right. And if he is not doing these missions and being a bounty hunter and bringing back, uh, you know, the bounty for the other Mandalorians, and if he's not trying to find a home, you know, for Grogu, who is he? Yeah. And he's, he's made some other sacrifices as far as his personality and his core beliefs and stuff like that go he's made that sacrifice and, and will make it again um, a couple of times now. And so it, probably everything that he knows about himself has, is being called into question, which is a really interesting place to leave this season because next season it's, it's, you know, up for grabs. Insane. They can 
honestly take this in any direction they want to next season and it'll pretty much be believable. Yep. Yeah. Total free for all. Yep. yep. Can't wait. Is it Excited. December yet? <laughs> the best guard gloves are off. Is it, is it 2021 yet? <laughs>